Hello, this is Borna from Borna.tv and uh, welcome to my second video on the WWDC 2008 Roundup and uh, this second video is going to talk about the SDK and new features and demos that will perform during the uh, keynote speech and uh, this one's going to be a little bit long. I had a lot to talk about. Um, there was a lot of things in here that impressed me. Um, a lot of new things that I didn't know and uh, a lot of just possibilities that Apple has opened up. So first off, uh, the keynote went and uh, it, it basically opened with the SDK and they were talking about the API and the frameworks and all the features that were all debuted in March. So it was kind of a review process after that point. Then they demoed the Interface Builder. Interface Builder allows you to drag and drop different components of your uh, application like buttons and drop downs and and things of the like and tie them to snippets of code so it's kind of a drag and drop interface for building an interface to an application very visual basic like if you're, if you're familiar with that language um, so the next thing that happened was they brought up a bunch of developers they were talking about how all these different development groups got a hold of the SDK and started building applications they kind of did that a little bit in March but they expanded on that and they, they got us up to date on the entire progress. Now the first demo was from Sega and this is this is a company that was there before in March and they, they demonstrated Super Monkey Ball. Super Monkey Ball is a game, um, I don't have my iPhone with me, but Super Monkey Ball, if you can imagine this remote to be an iPhone, it's a game where you move the uh, iPhone like this and uh, you can move a, a ball around to solve various puzzles and uh, it was a very very nice looking game and uh, I think Sega has really refined it and they're only going to be selling it for ten dollars so I thought that was a pleasant surprise I was expecting fifteen twenty dollar price tags I thought these guys were really going to inflate the prices but ten dollars is reasonable for a little you know a little fun game to kill the time with with your iPhone using the accelerometer. So the accelerometer and the graphic capability was the highlight of that demonstration. Next was eBay. eBay came up and they demonstrated their application and they were talking about the network aspects and how it all ties into the internet seamlessly as well as eBay's network. So there was a native eBay application very dangerous. <laughs> if you are an eBay user or you know somebody who's addicted to eBay you know that you can spend a lot of money really fast without knowing it so um, it was very easy to add items from search results to your watch list as well as um, use the webkit feature to view the description and things like that so it was very well integrated and um, and they had some notification features as well so that if you get a, a, a if you get overbid you'll get notified and then you can uh, update your bid accordingly so that's gonna be kinda cool uh, next was uh, looped I like to call these guys <laughs> Jaiku for the iPhone I haven't talked much about Jaiku on this show but Jaiku is a is a web app is a web application that also runs on Nokia phones and it has location aware features so wherever you are you know the application adjusts accordingly this application looped is the same thing It's taking advantage of what they call core location on the SDK where you can utilize the location based features of the iPhone to create an application so this is a social network so if you wanna say I'm da -da -da, I'm drinking a cup of coffee at Starbucks and it will automatically update your location on a map where you're doing it and you can automatically pop up people that are around you now there are other applications that are have already been written for the iPhone if you've jailbroken it that have that with Twitter but uh, this is going to be one of the first that I've seen with the uh, the new iPhone SDK and legitimate applications and eBay and loop I believe are going to be free when the uh, app store is released in July uh, TypePad came up and did a, a demonstration. They were talking about mobile blogging, picture blogging. Kind of boring in my mind. I knew about it already. Nothing new there. Pangea Software. Now that was a cool demo. They came up and did two demonstrations of two games. One was called Enigma, which was a water drop puzzle game where you use the accelerometer to move drops of water to uh, solve puzzles, which was kind of cool. And the other one was very, very interesting. This one really intrigued me. Chromag Rally. And it reminded me a lot of the Nintendo Wii because your actual phone, I don't have my iPhone here. This is an iPhone. I don't have my phone here, but 
you can use the actual iPhone as your steering wheel. So it kind of reminded me, you know, I got the Wii wheel, you know, I'm moving my controller like this to control the car. It, it, it has that kind of feel to it, you know, it has that kind of a, kind of a control mechanism. I'm not going to say it's exactly like the Wii because there is no way that an iPhone can be exactly like the Wii. But um, it's, very, it's a very Wii-like racing game where you're a caveman racing, I think on a rock or something. And, you know, you basically move the controller back and forth to steer. And it looked very fun. So uh, they didn't announce any prices, I don't think, but that looks that looked really cool. Now, one thing, the next demonstration is what really, really, really surprised me and I think a lot of other people. And it was by a company called Cal Music, which essentially was a side project of a developer of an insurance some insurance company. He just did this as a side project. It's a music application which has an on-screen display of various instruments and you can create music on the iPhone. Now I was like, okay, music app, whatever. They demonstrated it and I was blown away. The piano was okay, a piano. The um, What else did they have? The guitar, they had a, a guitar application. But the one that really impressed me was the 12 bar blues application. They play the blues riff in the background and you could hit various notes and various riffs and create and I mean literally in seconds have a really nice sound coming out of it they also had a drum app as well to do beats and beat loops so I was like man that's that's a whole realm that I didn't even think about was possible on the iPhone so and this was a side project so I, I was very very impressed uh, MLB.com came up there and Major League Baseball came up there and they have a new feature called At Bat and At Bat allows you to 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 have a feature that what they call instant or um, I don't know what the word is <laughs> the coolest feature is that you get an instant video replay shortly shortly after it happens so say you're on a train or on a bus and you're following a baseball game in their application and they say oh there's a double play at the end of that inning and you want to see the video replay literally after the play happens they make the video clip available to you you tap on it and then you can see on the iPhone the video of a play that just happened like less than a minute ago so that is that that was the coolest feature I saw from Major League Baseball now the next two companies are from um, from the medical industry this is absolutely ginormous this is a huge market. Apple is doing something very right here. The first one is Modality and it is a learning app. Now in the medical field a lot of these kids and, and, and people who learn the medical industry they have to use flashcards to know body parts and all the different things that we just can't fathom with our small brains but they have to do a lot of memorization this application brings that to the iPhone where you can view various things and actually tie in to Wikipedia and Google to find more information on various things so it had a lot of new a lot of cool nifty features but it's gonna be huge in the medical industry but the next one that impressed me even more it was a, a company called Memvista and they were able to to view radiology cat and pet scans right on the iPhone look at these scans and pinch and zoom rotate measure do all types of doctorish things I guess you can say but all types of things that that doctors usually do with these cat scans or radiology scans right on your mobile device now I've seen I've seen this firsthand doctors usually have like a printout of it and they're looking at it they're doing this they're doing that they got the measurements you know right on your iPhone right there they'll be able to do that so that is a big big deal so it, it had all kinds of things change the viewing plane go from switch back and forth between cat and pet scan you know look at the metabolic activity all these different things were right there on the iPhone the next company was digital legends they just started two weeks ago and they were able to port a 3d game that looked a lot like a your typical hash, hack and slash game um, nothing really fancy about it except you can use the iPhone controls to you know climb ropes and this and the swing things but they showed a nice little 3D clip and they were talking about the 3D capabilities of the iPhone. So this 3D clip in the game, it kind of reminded me of God of War and Heavenly Sword. You know, while you're fighting mid-fight, you see a video uh, clip of some big monster busting out and you have to kill it. That's exa exactly what happened. So that was actually very cool. So that's that was all the demonstrations from all the companies. But this last thing is what's being talked about the most in the web right now. and Apple came out a few weeks or I think it was a couple months ago and said that they weren't going to allow you to run background applications meaning 
if you if you like on the on the IM application and you want to just minimize it and only show up if you get a new message, uh, you want to just have it running in the background. You couldn't do that. So applications like Twitter, IM, and all these notification apps weren't going to be able to run. Apple came out and talked about their solution to this. They have a notification system, which will notify the user when the application is closed. So you can close the application completely. It will your application won't be running at all. And they have this two th actually it's a three tier system where they have a notification system at Apple and your application server can send three types of notifications to Apple server and it will it will have a persistent IP connection to your iPhone so that you can have a push notification system without your application even running. Now, I thought it was very, very cool and innovative how they did it. So there's three types of notifications. Uh, there's badges. If you ever looked on the iPhone and there's a new email message and it has a number, that's a badge. So if you get like a new IM from an IM client, it'll update that badge and say, hey, you got two new messages. There's sounds. So if you want to have custom sounds for a new IM or a new alert, you can push a sound through this notification system. And finally, you can have a custom textual alert. So you know like on the iPhone when you get an SMS or a new SMS, you can view the SMS message. It pops up a little window and it gives you the first few uh, first few letters or the first few characters of that SMS message and then you can open it or you can just close it. So those are the three types of notifications that this system is going to bring you. Now it's controversy around the web because a lot of people are mad because it seems like Apple is making this system to where they will own too much of the infrastructure. People are complaining that they're used to owning that. They're used to owning this notification layer. They're used to owning, you know, the application, you know, sending and receiving these things running in the background. But having used these mobile apps and these phones for a long time personally, I can say when things run in the background, it does consume battery life. It does consume CPU cycles and it does consume memory. It slows down the phone. I even noticed that when I jailbroke my iPhone and when I run when I left SSH running for 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 whatever reason, I left it running, the battery drained faster. The system was slower. If I run Summerboard, which is the application to to change themes with the jailbroken iPhone, everything's slower. Everything slows down. Um, if you run these these Twitter applications and these IM applications, these things have to run in the background on your jailbroken iPhone and it consumes resources. And the number one reason why I unjailbroke and wipe my phone clean is because I couldn't deal with that instability. I could not compromise stability for these applications. That was the reason why I don't have a jailbroken iPhone. Apple is answering that direct question. They are saying how are you going to do notifications without running an application in the background take it offline centralize the Apple that's that's the controversy but take it offline have the notification system on a different tier have a persistent IP connection so if you as soon as you get an IM it'll update you on your iPhone so it's gonna seem like you're getting an update it's gonna seem like the application is running in the background but it isn't your phone's going to be running like it isn't. It's going to free up those resources. And the only thing that's going to be happening is that you're going to have that persistent connection between you and Apple's notification system. Now, the, 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 the topic of data ownership is coming up. So you got these three types of notifications. Badges. Who cares about badges? I don't. Sounds. Who cares about sounds? I don't. Now, the custom textual alerts could contain system or, or sensitive data. So if you're really concerned about data ownership, um, then you know you probably won't be using custom textual alerts in your application because those do have to go through Apple system and they're probably going to be stored on Apple system but in this day and age I mean come on <laughs> if anybody uses Google here you really don't have an argument if you use Gmail if you use Google search you use all these Google applications you really don't have an argument because Google has all that data they can do whatever they want with it don't tell them I told you that, but it's true. <laughs> I just, I don't care about these types of, these notifications that much to raise a big stink. And, you know, a lot of people are arguing that it's a single point of failure. And yeah. So, you know, when it's on your phone, it's a single point of failure as well. I mean, the application crash, it could bring down the iPhone. If, if something's running in the background, using too much memory, and you're in the middle of a call, it could crash your iPhone. 
So I'd rather take this, I'd rather use this system that Apple has rather than the traditional system, which has failed. It has failed. I use it on Palm. I use it on Blackberry. I use it on Symbian. Symbian has a memory leak problem. It's well documented. If these applications run in the background, you cannot run too many applications. And Apple even made fun of Windows Mobile's Task Manager. They have an application dedicated to closing background applications and making sure you don't use too much resources, which is it is it's too much. It's just too much. The number one the number one reason why applications hang up and, and do this is because uh because of, of resources that are lost. So I guess I should wrap up now. This video is running a little bit long. <laughs> but anyway, those are all the thoughts I had about the SDK, all these wonderful demonstrations, all these wonderful features that are going to be coming to developers. And I think it's going to really, really, really open things up and really just really make things so much different than what we're used to. So I'm excited about this. This part of the, the keynote more than I am about anything, as you can tell by the length of the video. All right, this is Borna from Borna.tv, and that's the SDK and new features of the firmware.